What's good, y'all? Welcome to an episode of Buzz Boys. And if you are a Charlotte sports fan, um, you know, today has been a very eventful day for Charlotte sports fans. I mean, you have the Book Night news, the Robbie Anderson news. Um, this video is going to be about Book Night. I'm getting a lot of people tagging me on Twitter, commenting on my videos like, yo, Book Night shit. So I was waiting to speak on it until I had all the facts. I usually don't even like to speak on, you know, bad PR stuff for the Hornets. It's just not who I am. I don't like to talk about negative stuff. But the season starts in literally two fucking days and you're getting arrested. I mean, it's like you can't even help but talk about this shit, bro. It's like we are cursed. It's like, bro, you got to be a real goon to play for the Hornets. You got to have that dog in you for real. You really got to go to jail to play for the Hornets. It's like, what the fuck is going on? For real, though. Um, But like I said, I was waiting to, you know, speak on it because I wanted all the facts. You know, I'm seeing some people say DUI. I'm seeing some people say there was a gun involved. There was a gun charge. Like, I'm just seeing different things. And I was trying to wait to get all the facts before I speak on stuff. And that's usually how I like to be. I like to get all the facts before I speak on stuff. But people are just like really like wanting me to make some content about it so here you go but we're about to get to the bottom of this right now i'm about trying to find a reliable source and really figure out what the fuck happened um because i'm seeing dui but i was definitely seeing some people talking about a gun um which i hope there i hope that's false i hope there is no gun i hope there is no gun that makes it way worse i hope there's no gun dui you know what I'm saying professional players get DUIs, you know, boom. But he also, Book Knight also had some, you know, driving issues in college. Um, I saw as well. Um, Book Knight had an arrest warrant for driving somebody else's car while drunk and crashing into a street sign and then evading the police his freshman year in college. So it's like, you know, we, we've seen we've seen stuff, you know, from Book Night as far as driving drunk and just driving, I don't know, period. Um so yeah, you know, that that can be that can be cleaned up, you know, license suspended, you got an Uber everywhere. There shouldn't be no more DUIs or whatever driving problems, but you never know. But yeah, I'm seeing people talk about a gun, but I don't see any charge about a gun. All he got charged with was driving while impaired. I really hate that I'm fucking doing this. Like this shit, I hate shit like this, bro. I hate this type of fucking content. I hate making this type of content. Even though content like this gets me the most views, I don't like talking about negative shit. I really, I really don't. I don't like to talk about another man's mistakes, another man's downfall. We all make mistakes. I really don't like talking about that shit. But I just had some people just asking me to make content. So here it is. But driving while impaired is the only thing that he has been charged with. Um, the Hornets put out an official statement like they always do. Copy and paste stuff. We are aware of the incident involved James book night, blah, blah, blah. No further comment at this time. That's it. Um, at this point, you know... I don't think this gets him kicked off the team or anything like, you know what I'm saying? It's a DUI. You know, it's not a, a violent charge, not a drug charge, not a gun charge. It's literally fucking DUI. I mean, you know, it's bad, but it's like, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a fucking DUI. This is like the least thing that you can get arrested for, basically. Basically, like the smallest thing that you can get arrested for, driving while drunk. Um... <laughs> Sorry. Then she said, go to Hayward as a vet. <laughs> go to Hayward, don't be doing shit as a vet. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. Bro. <laughs> but. <laughs> That's funny as hell. Because you know, go to Hayward is not talking to these guys. They're really like, bro, come on, bro. But on a serious note, it is time to talk about. Do the Hornets have a culture issue? And the answer definitely seems to be yes. I mean, we don't see any other teams having these many problems. Bro, this is in one off season. 
that we have had players just in the news for bad things. Current players, former players, and like I said, I don't like to comment. I didn't make videos about any of those incidents because that's not who I am. I don't even like to push like that out. I don't even, you know, um, the Miles British I was forced to talk about because, I mean, damn. It was the day before free agency and it was literally a fucking felony. He's literally out the league right now. I had to speak on that. Um, with this, it sucks, but I don't expect Boone had to really miss court time. Um, I mean, he could be punished just by Steve Clifford, you know, for being irresponsible and all this stuff, you know, it's just no telling. Um, but I think we definitely do have a culture problem. Uh, I think stuff like this, it, it comes from the lack of vets, um, just in the locker room, able to keep young guys head on straight. Um, because we've been dealing with stuff like this for years now. I mean, with the whole Malik Monk thing, a whole lot of stuff is, you know, it just seems like players in Charlotte, something is going on where their behavior is just not in line with that of a typical NBA player. Like, why is it always a Charlotte Hornets? Like, we're the Dallas Cowboys of the NBA. I mean, the Cowboys always get somebody getting arrested every offseason. Seriously, no funny shit. But it's like, this is all damn near in one offseason. All of this crazy stuff happening. Like, at this point, we looking at everybody in the organization. Like, what's going on to where we're bringing in guys who are troublemakers? We're, I don't know. It's like, you know, where's the evaluation at a certain point? It's like, bro, y'all are just ignoring people with behavioral issues and drafting them anyway, or, or what? I don't know. It just, it, it really makes no fucking sense, bro. Like, this is crazy to me. Why are we always going through this shit, bro? Like, what's going on? For real. I really, like, I can't, I can't understand it, man. And, I mean, this isn't even Book Night's first time being in the press negatively um, this offseason. I mean... He got kicked out of some fucking UConn game earlier. Actually, that was, I mean, that was, that was, uh, I mean, March Madness. So that had to be, you feel me? That wasn't even the off season. But, you know, Bill Knight hasn't been having too much positive PR off the court. He hasn't been having too much positive PR on the court because he's been playing like shit. So, <laughs> yeah, man, I mean, this fucking sucks. This is, this is bad. This is bad for him. This is bad for the Hornets. A number six pick already looking <laughs> flamed out. I mean, damn, bro. You're not even reaching your own potential because you steady acting a fool. And I mean, it's like, bro, we have seen more, way more negative things come from the book night camp than positive. I mean, even back to him, you know, getting all in Borrego's face, similar to the way Robbie Anderson did yesterday. A bench altercation. Okay, that was, you know, one of the first times his name really rang out. I mean, it's it's like every single time Book Night's in the news, it's not for anything fucking good. Um, missing Summer League with injury, all kinds of stuff. It's like, bro, it's like, damn, kid, can you get your name ringing for the right reasons? <sighs> it sucks, but at the same time, this kind of might push McGowns that much more above Book Night if they're already about tit for tat. Next thing you know, you know, we're we're trying to push and develop McGowns and Book Night somewhere in Greensboro or an afterthought before you know it. If this shit keeps up, you know what I'm saying? If this shit keeps up, um behavioral issues, performance issues, not even fucking doing shit on the court. And it's like, in the minutes that McGowns played this preseason, he looked pretty damn good. And we saw what he did in Summer League. He looked good as fuck. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if in the next coming days, we see Bryce McGowns come off a two-way. And, hold on, now that I think about it, nah. I was about to say, because Theo Maladon got signed to a two-way. And I thought Tyshawn Alexander got signed to a two-way, but he didn't. I think Tyshawn was an Exhibit 10. So right now, McGowns and Theo are two ways, but I wouldn't be surprised if McGowns comes off a two way and gets a, a, a like unguaranteed one year contract or something, because he's talented. And I mean, with Booknight acting a fucking ass, 
shit, Book Night get demoted. You feel me? And we get McGowns in there getting some rotation minutes. As we saw in the preseason, there was a few times where it was LaMelo, McGowns, Tiro, PJ, Plumley. Like we I mean we saw we saw McGowns out there with starters multiple times this preseason. So Steve Clifford likes the kid. And Steve Clifford liked Book Night too. He gave him plenty of chances all preseason. Gave him plenty of opportunity, plenty of run. So, you know, it, it was Book Night's job to lose. Seems like it, it might be lost. I don't know. Um but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up, y'all. I mean, I'm at ten minutes. I've I've said what I had to say on it. Um it's not a good look. It's embarrassing for the book night. It's embarrassing for the organization that for seemingly the third or fourth time this offseason, negative PR is coming out around the Charlotte Hornets because a player, former or current, has had something going on in the news, arrested or whatever the case may be. <sighs> It sucks, um, and I mean, I really do think we definitely have a culture problem. I, I have to say that there has to be something. I mean, you just can't have all this stuff happening, and it's just like a coincidence. I, I know people are people. They're grown men. They're going to do whatever they want to fucking do, but it just seems like, I mean, damn, it's happening to us way more than anybody else. Um, you know, I don't know. If this falls on Mitch and, and, and Jordan and their, like I said, evaluation process of, of draft picks. But, I mean, it has to fall on somebody. You know what I'm saying? When you have a problem, it's somebody's fault. That's just that's just life. You know, whose fault is it? Now it's time for us to really kind of look. Whose fault is it for this culture problem? Is it Jordan? Is it Mitch? Is it somebody else in the front office? Who's doing this talent evaluation when it comes draft time? What's going on? But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this shit up. I don't want to talk about this shit anymore. Um, on some other news, while I'm up here doing this, um, Steve Clifford commented like literally not too long ago, about 30 minutes ago, and said that he does not think that... Uh, LaMelo will be ready for Wednesday, which is the season opener. So there is a chance that he can miss the season opener. I just want him to be there Friday because I'm not going to lie. I want to go to the home opener, but I don't know if I'm going to go if, if, if LaMelo not playing, bro. Like, shit, I don't want to fucking, you know, I'm going to see LaMelo shit. <laughs> shit, I, I don't know. I might go because I went to the 76ers game when we had no LaMelo, no we were missing a lot of people, and I still went to that 76ers game. But that was when we were hit with COVID bad, COVID and injuries. We were, we were missing a lot of guys, and we still put up a decent fight against the 76ers. I went to that game. Um, let me see. Yeah, LaMelo is highly doubtful for the opener. Uh, Miles Bridges' latest hearing is, uh, this is all from Rod Boone, um, LaMelo is highly doubtful for the opener. Miles Bridges' latest hearing is scheduled for today. And ESPN has pulled the plug on the Bulls versus Hornets on ESPN for November 2nd. Which is understandable because, you know, it was supposed to be Ball Brothers, LaMelo versus Lonzo. And they're both fucking hurt. So, fuck that shit. That shit's getting yanked off national TV quick as fuck. So, yeah. Um... This is the life of a fucking Hornets fan. This is the life of a Charlotte sports fan. It's miserable. At least for me, I got my Tar Heels, man. You know, we're we're both ranked top 25 right now. UNC basketball, number one in the country, baby. UNC football, number 22. At least I got that. Goddamn. But when it comes to my Charlotte sports teams, man, damn. It's miserable. It's miserable. Life as a Hornets and Panthers fan is fucking miserable as hell, bro. But... Yeah, so, so far, Steve Clifford said it's highly doubtful that LaMelo Ball will play in Wednesday's season opener in San Antonio. Ball has not been able to practice since the injury. So, 
He's a no-go for Wednesday. I mean, today's Monday, so it's right around the corner. He's a no-go for Wednesday, and apparently, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to comment on Friday's game, the 21st, but hopefully he can play because I, I, I would let to go see LaMelo play. But anyways, like I've said for the third fucking time in this video, I am am wrapping this bitch up for real. So, you know, if y'all enjoyed it, if y'all new to the channel, um, this is a Hornets channel, Panthers, UNC, that's really the three teams that I talk about. Mainly Hornets, obviously Buzz Boys. Y'all know what it's about. But anyways, y'all new to the channel. Like and subscribe. Comment as well. Um, turn that notification bell on so you guys can, you know, get everything that I drop. Uh, I'm going to be going live most of the time for most of the Hornets games. So if you guys want to watch the game with me, feel me, tap in. Make sure that notification bell on so y'all don't miss my lives. Also... On the lives, man, people were commenting on my live telling me to flip the camera so y'all could watch the game. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that next time because I just saw yesterday my live got copyrighted from that last 76 game. Like they copyrighted claim my live. I don't know. I don't want to keep getting copyright claims on my channel and get in trouble or some shit because I know like even Sports Center they can only show like 30 to 50 seconds or something of clips because it's like... You know, if the game's televised on TNT, but ESPN is showing hella highlights, it's like it's 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 it becomes an issue. So I don't know what the certain amount of time that you can show another network's the television broadcast is, but yeah, I'm gonna have to chill out on that. Y'all gonna have to watch the game on your own and just vibe with me. I'll give y'all the links because I I be streaming my shit. So I'll give y'all the links. I'll tweet the links out or whatever so y'all can watch the game, but. I can't be flipping the camera showing the game, man. YouTube gonna shut my ass down. I ain't, I ain't risking my channel for that shit, man. Fuck that. But anyways, I'll catch y'all on the next one. I appreciate y'all. Peace. Oh, you a Panthers fan, stay tuned to the channel because you know I'm about to drop the Robbie Anderson video right after I get done with this one. So stay yes, tuned. I actually have some, some information to add to this book night video. Um... And this is what I said. I, I like speaking stuff when I have all the facts. So I just found some more facts. So Book Night was had a tw a twenty five hundred dollar bond, which isn't shit. Literally post two hundred fifty dollars and you get out. Like it's not shit. Um, but the thing is, Book Night was already supposed to be in court later this month for a previous violation. Book Night has several pending charges in Cabarrus County from November of last year. That includes speeding and reckless driving. He was cited for driving 107 miles per hour in a 65 mile per hour zone. So he's already have tickets, warrants, all this stuff for driving, which I did state earlier, but that was his freshman year of college. This is stuff from now in Charlotte. Um, Book Knight has charges pending from at least two other times. He was stopped in Mecklenburg County, which is Charlotte, Mecklenburg County, um, Last Wednesday, according to court records, he was ticketed for driving 92 miles per hour in a 50 miles per hour zone, cited for both speeding and reckless driving, and he was ticketed in February for reckless driving. His court date is set for December for those cases. And he had another ticket, 84 miles per hour in a 35 miles per hour zone, uh, which was... Um, which was dismissed by error, but has been reinstated. So this he's had like four or five offenses. Some of them even just last week, where he's been caught getting speeding tickets, speeding tickets, speeding tickets, speeding tickets, speeding tickets, speeding tickets, speeding tickets and reckless driving and all this stuff. And now it just he finally got arrested for a DUI, which is something that they had to arrest. And I mean, you know, like I said, twenty five hundred dollar bond isn't shit, but it's just like he been wilding. He been wildin'. This that's crazy as fuck just to read like he been wildin'. This shit ain't nothing new. He been wildin'. That's crazy as fuck to me. I'm shocked. I mean, he just got a he just got a speed ticket last week. Last Wednesday. Like today's Wednesday, bro. No, no, no. I'm tripping. Today's Monday. It had to be a bit of week. That's some crazy ass shit. Damn book, what the fuck? What the fuck? But that shit is like, you know, saying drive, you know, NBA players get speed tickets. It's not news. Nobody can get speed tickets news. But when you get a DDY and then you go back and look like, yeah, this guy has four or five speeding tickets and, and reckless driving 
charges. I think Rick is driving his charge ticket. I don't fucking know. But it's like either way, he has a track record of this shit. That's when it becomes alarming. Because it's like, bro, you clearly don't give a fuck about how you operate your car. Yeah, that's crazy. And I mean, even LaMelo has had some complaints. I don't think he's ever gotten pulled over. But he's had some official complaints. I mean, I know he's had some complaints about how he speeds leaving the stadium and shit like that. But I mean, at the same time, it's like shit. Motherfuckers drive McLarens and shit. You know, you gonna speed. I can't act like I don't be speeding in my fucking Mustang, bro. Like, on my way back from Charlotte to Raleigh, bro, I was pushing like a hundred the whole way home. So I can't, you feel me? But still, you in city limits speeding around, that's different to be on the fucking highway. I don't know. But you motherfuckers driving crazy ass cars. I'm already knowing. You feel me? But still, y'all not supposed to do that shit. Y'all supposed to be responsible fucking adults and, you feel me, NBA players and pillars of y'all community. But, yeah, I just had to drop in that little nugget because I did find some more uh, official information to give y'all. And like I said, that's what I like to do. But, anyways, peace.